We all know that paper altered with citrusol makes a wonderful collage element full of mystery and texture and color, but it can also be used as a texture layer for photo collage. It's really fairly simple. The first thing you need to do is to scan the paper into your collage and so this just means laying it on a scanner and then bringing it into Photoshop saving it probably call it texture and save it in your files and open it up I'm using Photoshop elements but you could also do this with Photoshop I simplified the process of using a texture I'm using the eraser tool as a paintbrush and you'll see how that works in just a minute one of the most important things is to make sure that your resolutions match and so what we're doing here is to look at the resolution size and you can see that this particular image is about 250 pixels per inch at 8.5 by 11 so a sheet of uh, printer paper and that looks pretty good because we'll be using it over another image we need to make sure that image has about the same resolution Here's the image that I found, and uh, this was a, a image that my friend Jennifer Martin took of a door. And what we're going to do is make sure these match so we can stack them together. So I try to look and see if this is close enough, and it is. It's not exact, but they're both about the same resolution, and I'm going to plan to clip these two together. So uh, close is good. The next thing we're going to do is to take the layer, the texture layer, select it all, and using the Move tool, we're going to drag it over on top of the picture of the doorway. You can see it's just a straight drag across. You won't be able to see the doorway underneath it yet because this layer is on top. You can see the layer here. You can see that the texture layer is on top of the what's the background layer you can always get rid of the lock on the background layer by dragging the little lock symbol on the right to the trash once it's on there we can crop the image so that there's no leftover on the sides of the picture where the doorway is. You want it to be a good fit and you kind of want to arrange the texture paper so that the most interesting parts of it are uh, on the edges because you're going to be revealing the doorway in just a little bit. What we want to do here is to see where the doorway fits underneath the texture layer. So we go to the texture layer which here is layer 1 and we use the slider for opacity and I've just arbitrarily adjusted it to about 60 percent but I do want to see the shape of the doorway underneath and that looks like it's positioned pretty well. Now the next technique we're going to use is to kind of make the doorway itself look a bit more painterly and a really good way to do this is to duplicate the doorway layer and um, have three copies of it there so we can use various filters and effects on it and when we're working this way it's usually handy to turn off a couple of the layers I'm turning off the texture layer here you can see that the little eyeball on the left has gone and I'm turning off the top background layer so I can work with the other two copies one of the first things I'm going to do is use a filter and this is going to be the very bottom layer I want it to have a little more of a sculptural look to it it won't look like this when we're finished but it will have kind of a subtle texture underneath it and a darkness and a, a weight to it that we can't get from just one layer of the photograph for this particular effect I use the stylized filter, use find edges, and then I inverted it. This is going to go on the very bottom. 
For my next effect, you can see over here on the left, I used the Gaussian Blur filter. This is nice because it gives sort of a softening layer to the whole uh, image and it makes it almost painterly as if it were done with watercolors. Again, the image is not going to stay like this. This is going to be an under layer that adds to the uh, the look of the, the painterly doorway image once the texture is applied. This will start to make sense pretty soon. So there's our blur layer and now we adjust back and forth the opacity of all these three layers that are stacked up on each other. We may want more of that dark bottom layer showing, we may want it to look more blurred, but by adjusting the opacity back and forth we can get a really interesting atmospheric look to our basic doorway photograph. Once we're happy with it, then we can open up the eyeball on the texture layer. We make the texture layer visible by clicking on the little eye symbol there. And the first thing we want to do is to adjust the opacity so that it suits us as far as a texture layer and here you can see that we've done this. So right now it just looks like kind of a veil of bubbles on top of the gate, but we're going to use our eraser tool to start revealing some of the doorway beneath. There are lots of different ways to do this. A lot of times you can put a layer adjustment mask on it. Photoshop Elements does not have this particular layer adjustment mask capacity. Photoshop does, but in both of them, if you want a shortcut, particularly for students, you can just use the eraser tool and change the opacity. This is what we mean. If you go to the eraser tool, you can select a brush that will act as an eraser brush and you can pick one with an interesting texture or design. And once you have that, this is a brush set that I downloaded from the internet and uh, it's some sort of a, 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 it's called a collage brush and it has some neat shapes on the edges. And then the next thing you want to do is to go up to the eraser opacity so that you're not erasing completely. You're letting a little bit of the background be revealed while still keeping a little bit of the texture layer. You can adjust the eraser brush and size. I like to have it kind of big so that it takes away more area. It just looks a, more, a little more painterly to me when you do that. And then you just start erasing with a brush. You erase through the texture and leave portions of the texture from the altered paper. You can see I left some of the bubbles down in that lower left hand corner. Um, this is really a fun part and if you erase too much you can do your edit undo. One tip is not to erase a whole bunch at any one time because if you do erase too much and you do erase or undo, you're going to lose the first part of your work. But if you take it in small steps, then you can just undo that one particular step. And this is really fun to see the paper start revealing itself. After that, if you'd like, you can add a text layer, add a font layer, and put an interesting font. I put take a chance on this because it was an open door, but the font's pretty pedestrian, so in the final version what I did was to change it to a font called Scriptina, and then I put a, a drop shadow underneath the font, and I'm really happy with, these, with the result. So if you look at the original picture of the door and then look at what we've done with it using the Citrus Solve paper as a text layer, I think you'll see some of the possibilities in here. It's a fun project. It takes about as long to do as it does to describe it, except for the time you play around with it, and um, it teaches you both technical skills and artistic collage and texture skills. Thank you.